In this video, guys, we're gonna look at timing a longer term short trade thesis. Stay tuned. Hey traders, warm welcome to you. All right, so you've got a thesis for a longer term short opportunity, generally on an individual stock. The market's a little bit different, but on an individual stock. And so your longer term thesis is that, hey, you know what, this stock's overvalued, you don't believe in the technology, you think the company's in trouble. Plenty of reasons why you might believe that actually the stock is, is way overvalued and it's probably gonna be worth significantly low. You could think the accountancy practices are a little bit dubious. And yes, you have gotta be careful about that kind of stuff because there's experts going over things. But more often than not, it's a thesis on some Something like for you and I, for example, retail thesis would be, hey, we can see that a certain store is never busy, right? Well, we see the valuation, it's all frothed up on this, but we see that perhaps people aren't wearing the brand as much as they should be. Now, this isn't that scientific, I grant you that, but let's just imagine that was our thesis. So we decided to short this brand, to short this specific retail store or whatever, or we wanted to short it, wanted to think, hey, don't think it's worth this anymore. I think they're gonna struggle. The next couple of quarters, I think it's gonna be bad for them. I want to make some money from that idea. So putting technicals aside for the moment, how do we time it and how do we kind of guide ourselves? Well, for me, there's two types of short scenarios, and there's one and two, is that you've got a scenario where the market is just chugging up and you believe that it's a short, and that's super dangerous to start stepping in front of that, and definitely would not recommend selling into the uptrend. It seems attractive, you think, well, I'm getting a higher price, I'm gonna make more money in my short, but everything's against you. You know, momentum's against you, investor sentiment's against you, you may well be right, but at the moment, price isn't telling you it's right. And I see people doing this you know, with various different stocks over the years, and they've sold and sold into uptrends, and eventually maybe it has collapsed, but they've been pu had to puke out the position because it's gone way further than they expected. So I think the golden rule is to be very careful about uptrends, and at least wait for this, number one, is to wait for the uptrend to stop. Don't sell into the uptrend, but at least wait until perhaps it starts to be range bound. So there's a little bit of doubt, because you think about what's actually happening. Hopefully you can still see this here. I'm gonna draw a little brief one here. When we're in an uptrend like this scenario, is money flowing into the stock. People are believing for whatever reason that this stock is, this company is going to grow. Because that's the only reason why institutional money buys a stock, they believe that the next few years it's gonna be worth more and it's going to grow. Now, imagine now if that stock starts to stagnate for a few months. If it starts to stagnate for a few months, that's telling you something that at least institutions are a little bit cool, specifically as well if the rest of the market is going higher or the rest of the market is staying reasonably strong. That's a little bit more of a sign. So you're like, okay, well, at least institutions are a little bit cautious now. I might be onto something. That, to me, is a better point of timing the shore than kind of stepping in front of the train here because you're just wrong at that point in time. You've just got to say, I'm wrong. The market is just pushing higher. But waiting for that range bound, just a little bit of doubt, just means that while well, the rest of the market's pushing higher, that's range bound. And it does mean, obviously, if the market goes lower, you may well find pressure onto it. It also means that there's a little bit of inconsistency and uncertainty around it. Money's flowing into everything else, but not this. Why? Because people are cautious about it. And what does that mean? They might be the first ones to pull the money out when they want to pull money out of their assets. Anyway, so there's that. Um, um, before we go into the actual short timing, guys, is that um, you've got to know when to get out. So if this then suddenly rips up and breaks that high there, you've got to say you're out, okay? The trouble I, I, a lot of short sellers do, longer term perspective, is that they're short selling and they're stubborn. Now, yes, by all means, you, sometimes you've got to ride out the short, but riding out the short is okay when you're in a range and having to sit through it in the range, that's fine. I think that's part of the course sometimes when you've got a longer term short thesis and you're waiting for it to play out. But riding it out as in taking pain every day while this thing just marches on and on and on, it's just not good practice, it's just not good. And most of us as retail traders haven't got pockets deep enough to do that. And if we do, the position's too small to be meaningful. So it's like, well, you don't really want it anyway, because if you're gonna chug up and you're prepared for it to chug up, you're gonna have a small position. So if it goes your way, you're not gonna make much. So, you know, that's the best scenario for you to initiate the short. And knowing that if it breaks that range, you cut it, you're gone. You're not gonna get involved in it anymore. Okay, now 
we're looking for catalyst confirmations. So it could be on a technical basis. So it starts to kind of drift lower, rest of the market's pushing higher, rest of the sector is strong. This thing's driving lower still or tickling lower, maybe not really driving yet. And then we get something coming out that maybe is sector related news that's not so bullish. Maybe they have an earnings call that's really bad. And in which case, yes, it gaps lower, but that might give the confirmation that it's one. You expect them to come in threes sometimes of profit warnings. So maybe if you get on the first one, you've already got a little bit of a short position, you can add to the short position. You know, we are, we've got to manage our capital, guys. We're not hedge funds here. We haven't got endless amounts of capital we can put on and sit through and wait and see what happens over the next years or so. We have to be a little bit more nimble, a little bit more able to time it. So looking for the catalyst confirmation, whether from a technical perspective or from a fundamental perspective. One thing to be careful of is that if you're in a short position and you have negative news on the stock, but the stock then goes up over the next few days, you should consider cutting that short position because that's a very dangerous position to be in. Negative news, stock still goes up. There's something you're missing. Something's not quite right. Maybe reassess, draw a line on the low of where that stock went to before the news and make your trade, an next trade potentially off that. So just be careful of that one. Number five is consider dip bias. So always look at the bullish argument. It's easy to get stubborn and to start thinking about short and how bad this company is and this, but look at the bullish argument. Take a step back and say, why is this a good buy? Why would people buy this if it dipped down here? Why would it be perceived as good value? Why would bad news be perceived as good value? Why would bad news be good news? All these kind of things, so that at least you've got an idea of who your opponents are, because your opponents are the longer term investors who are buying this stock and are looking to buy it cheap. But what you want is to be to preempt them selling that stock. So at some point you want to preempt them saying, hey, you know what, this is no longer a good investment for me because that's going to help your short position. Because ultimately what you want, guys, is not more short sellers sitting here. You want investors selling the stock and no more investors wanting to buy the stock. That's what creates a supply demand imbalance in your favor as a short seller, not necessarily other short sellers sitting here. Of course it does help, but it's the bigger money not coming in, pulling out and not having that support from anyone else buying it. And the final thing is when you're right, no one to exit. So what level is really kind of a level that looks bargain for a buyer, a real punt, it's like, oh, well, I'll buy it there. It's a good punt. It's this, it's that, and the other. And that's where you want to be out. You want to be in the, out on the level where people are just buying it just because it could recover or a good technical level, a really low technical level so that you're not overstaying your welcome. You're not kind of trying to squeeze too much out of the trade. And your thesis is maybe 80% right. And 80% right, you know, if you get a good short position, it happens quickly, you take your money out, you move on to the next, or you wait till the next deal comes along and just keep scanning for your criteria to take the short in the first place. All right, guys, so there's six kind of tips, if you like, I'm not using the word tips, but six ideas on how to time that longer term short trade if you've got a thesis. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And I'll see you next one. Take care. Bye-bye.